Sensei here. Welcome to uh, Siki Sensei's uh, Encounters. Today we have a really special guest, and uh, his name is Dan, and he is from uh, FanQuest. Welcome, Dan. Thank you. Um, would you like to talk more about yourself? Sure. I'm, a, I'm an instructor here, actually, at Red River College, uh, where we are right now, and this is also going to be the location of FanQuest, which is our new fan convention uh, we're throwing in, on June 23rd and 24th. It's basically a celebration about all the fandoms we love, anime, um, comic books, movies, TV shows, sci-fi fantasy, everything that we love, kind of all mixed together in a big kind of convention for the weekend. And what kind of a programming and events does FanQuest provide? Oh, all kinds of stuff. Um, you can find a full listing on our website, fanquestcon.com, but uh, we are having panels on um, on fandom, you're going to do one for us about mental health yes, and fandom. Yes. Uh, we also have one Maybe. about uh, uh, independent filmmaking, voice acting, um, uh, publishing, getting yourself published if you want to write a book or publish a comic book. Uh, all kinds of stuff. Everybody is coming here to kind of help grow fandoms in all in all different ways. Thank you for that, Dan. Uh, a lot of people look, do look forward to going to FanQuest. I hope so. Yes, <laughs> including myself, where I'll be doing a panel on toxicity within fandoms which I'll talk about more near the end of this video. So, let's go right into it. What is your perspective on mental health? Oh, mental health. Well, I mean, it's, it's a super uh, important issue these days, much more so than when I was a kid. I do, I, it's so, um, it's not strange, but it's different for me. Uh, you know, I'm in my 40s, I grew up in the 80s, and, and for me, it was not something we ever talked about uh, as a kid, if I was stressed out or I had a bad day or, or, or that kind of thing. I, um, I just, just was kind of pushed it down. You were told, told to suck it up, and it's you know what I mean. That was kind of the attitude back then, and now we're much more engaged with ourselves. We know more about these things, about anxiety, depression, and all the other uh, issues uh, that surround mental health. Um, and I think it's a great time to be uh, to be in this you know this age we have that we can, we can provide care for people. Uh, although there's still a long way to go in that respect. There is a lot that uh, needs to be done. Yeah. Right. I know there's a lot of like differences of how mental health is perceived, like you said, right? Yes. And in person back then, would you like to talk a little bit more about that? I, I started FanQuest because I wanted to uh, organize an event, help celebrate fandom, and with that, of course, comes um, uh, positive mental health, right? And we want people to feel good and have a good time and be happy and, and enjoy themselves. Um, however, the process of planning FanQuest has not been great for my mental health. And I'm fully aware of this, and I, I know that I need to do something that I need to work on. I, and I'll tell you, so this is our second year. Uh, and last year was our first time doing it. I was very, it was a very stressful time for me. And I can't, I barely remember the weekend last year. I, um, I was so stressed out about so many different things. This year, I'm taking the time, um, I'm actually making a conscious decision to not worry and I'm gonna do that. If you see me worrying at the con, tell me to stop. Um, because I'm, I'm making a decision. I, I'm yes. creating this event because I want to go to this event and have a good time. So I am going to make a, a decision to, to not stress out. There's only so much you can do, right? So that's kind of my attitude about it. So I'm, you know, I'm very busy right now getting ready for the convention, but once we're underway, it's just gonna be having a good time. Yes, and smooth sailing, hopefully. <laughs> so, so it sounds like being a con uh, organizer can be really stressful and yes. has a lot of challenges. Yes, uh, it's not it's not an easy task and, and there's not um, not much glory in it. I don't know that anybody thinks that there is, but I've heard that a couple of times because we do have, uh, you know, we have so-called celebrity guests coming in and people and, and people think that you just do these things to get to meet famous people, but it's not necessarily about that at all. I, I barely interacted with our guests last year and again, I want to take more time for that this year, but um, I do think that, uh, you know, as I said, it's, it's just stressful as everything comes together. You know, I, I've been, it's been months and months we've been working on this, right? Over since, a year since the last convention. And, but now, it start, everybody's starting to realize, oh, 
it's only 10 days away. Oh, I, I better ask Dan this, I better ask Dan that. And it's like everybody's emailing me and I'm like, okay. And I gotta get back to everybody. So I, I just spend there, like I, I started on the email spiral that kind of takes me in and then two hours later, I'm like, oh, where did the time go? And so that's a bit of an issue for me as well, time management. So I'm doing my best to manage that as well. Yeah, good, good. Now, when you touch upon how mental health is good for fandoms, what does that look like? <laughs> It, it's, a, it's a good question because these days it is a tough road out there for fandoms. Um, and I'll talk about Star Wars in particular, which is probably one of my favorite fandoms. I love Star Wars um, and I respect people who, who love Star Wars but maybe are not happy with the newer movies that, that have been coming out the last few years. But recently there was an issue uh, with Kelly Marie Tran, I don't know if you're aware of this. Um, she basically had to quit social media because of all the online uh, trolling and bullying she was receiving uh, from people who were not fans of her character in the, in the Last Jedi in the, in the film. Um, and to me, I, I mean, that's the opposite of what it should be. Um, really, if you if, if you don't like the movie, fine. You know, it's not it's not a big deal. It's a movie. It's not the end of the world. Um, but try to like the movie. Try to see the positives in it. Try to not worry so much about the things that didn't turn out the way you thought they were going to turn out. I think that's a big problem. People are having a big problem with that. Like. In the new Han Solo movie, Han Solo isn't who they thought he was or who they thought he would be, and people are upset about that. But it's just a movie, it's just a <laughs> fictional character. It's not, it's not life or death. It's just fandom, and and so for me, it, positive fandom it includes like being happy about the new movie, enjoying it, going to a movie with your friends, and talking about it afterwards. And that's kind of what what I try to do. And by the way, I love that new Solo movie. I think it's great. Nice. I gotta watch it myself. Yeah. What do you say about uh, people participating in some of the activities that go along with joining fandoms? So let's say, for example, the time to cosplay, the time to make panels, the time to initiate a project and join community groups, all that sorts of stuff. Yeah, we, we were a big big supporter of that kind of thing at FanQuest because that's how we started. Basically, it was just a group of friends getting together to organize an event. Um, so we do have a number of, of uh, club tables, clubs coming here to promote their specific things to other fandoms. And uh, also we have, of course, cosplayers coming out. And this is such a, Winnipeg has such a good cosplay community that uh, we're expecting a ton of people. We had a ton of people last year, and I was oh, yes. so surprised by that. Uh, and this year I'm expecting, uh, expecting another uh, ton of people, exactly another ton of people, um, to come dressed up. And I think for them, I, now I've never done it myself, it's not my fandom necessarily, but I love that they do it. I love that they put so much time and effort into into crafting their costumes and, and the makeup and everything. Um, we're expecting a good turnout for that and we're having a costume contest as well to reward those who are putting so much work into their uh, to their cosplay. It, it also provides a lot of like you know structure in your lives to really prepare for things like FanQuest, right? Yeah, and, and I've, been, I've, told, I've been told from a lot of people who do this that it's a way for them to come out of their shell. They may be an introverted person, they may not be able to talk too much in public, in public settings, they get nervous or anxious about it. And dressing up in costume and putting a mask on is a way for them to kind of feel like they're not themselves and to get out more and to interact with people more, which is also good for your mental health, right? So that's another positive about, about cosplay. Uh, we, the, 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 fan, or the, the panels and the Q&As and everything that, all the programming here is all about sharing uh, fandoms and also uh, building fandoms, which, by, which I mean, um, and it ties into the college here as well because our, one of our grads, is, uh, one of our guests is Pablo Hidalgo, who works for Lucasfilm now, uh, but he's a grad of, of Red River College, he went to the Creative Communications program here, and he turned his fandom into a career working for Star Wars, oh, right? How cool is that? That is really cool. So that's the kind of message we want. We want lots of kids and teenagers and kids who are early about to decide what they want to do with their lives to come here and to explore the different possibilities because your fandom can become your career, you can become your job. You know what I mean? Like it's, it's absolutely possible and, and many of our vendors, artists who are here are designers and graphic designers and comic book creators and all people who have decided to pursue their fandom as a career. So that's kind of what, what a boys up. What it boils down to. <laughs> I guess when uh, they are really passionate about something, it, it builds on their lives, and yes. I think it's a really positive thing. Speaking of most of the programming that Fanda FanQuest provides, I know FanQuest tries to become unique from other cons. So, would you like to talk more about that and how that relates to uh, providing towards people's mental health? 
Yeah, it, it's, um, and I'll, I'll, tell you, I'll tell you a story. So the first time I ever went to a con was in 2007. Uh, it was the Magical Comic Con. It was in uh, the Victoria Inn. So this is before C4 became C4 and, and went to the convention center, before the big con started happening. Yeah. And I, I'd never been to a convention before. I, I'd grown up loving all these things that I saw the poster for and I'm like, oh man, Darth Vader, like David Prowse was there. The, the guy who played Darth Vader is at, you know, a Comic Con. I'm like, I have to meet him. I want to meet him. I didn't know anything about uh, how it worked. And I came to the convention, I, I didn't bring a lot of money because I was a poor student back then and I didn't have a, a, a lot of money to spend. And uh, so I paid my admission fee and then I went up and I saw David Krause and I noticed that they were selling autographs at his table for $25 a piece. And I went, oh. Um, because I didn't have any money on me and I didn't feel comfortable walking up to him and talking to him if I wasn't going to buy an autograph. So I didn't. Uh, so that kind of always stuck with me that I feel like the autograph fee is kind of a barrier for people to meet those who they admire, those who they look up to, those who inspire them, actors and, and, and creators and, um, of fandoms. So that's why we don't have autograph fees at our, at our convention. That's one way in which we're kind of trying to differentiate ourselves from other conventions. Um, so if you want to meet uh, Pablo Hidalgo, who is going to be here. Um, now he's not a, you know, a famous actor who's in front of the camera, but he's, he's met virtually everybody in the Star Wars world. <laughs> so you can shake his hand and by challenge of property, you're shaking Mark Hamill's hand. Because um, he shook my camel's hand, I have a photo of it. Um, but um, so you can meet Pablo and Nicole DeBoer, who's uh, who's from Star Trek: Deep Space Nine. She's also from a film called Cube, and a couple of other things. Kevin McDonald, who's from Kids in the Hall. These are all yes. people who um, who have a fan base, and you can come here, meet them, talk to them, get an autograph if you want, and it's not going to cost you anything extra. You just you know, it's all included in the price of admission. So what I'm hearing is that with FanQuest, it seeks to break down some of those barriers people have in meeting some of those guests that you want to meet. Yes, right? exactly. And that's our goal is to foster um, uh, a meaningful experience for everybody who attends. Um, and that includes guests. We want the guests to have a good time. We want, uh, you know, I've seen at, at a concept I've been to, I've seen guests sit at tables waiting to sign autographs, doing nothing for hours. Uh, because there's nobody coming up to them, and I'm like, oh, that sucks, that must suck to be them. Uh, so if our guest is sitting there and there's nobody coming up to them, we're going to get them moving around and doing something else, you know what I mean? So if they want to go play some video games over in the gaming area, they can do that. If they want to pop in on a panel over here, they can do that. It's all about spontaneity and fun, that's what we're looking to do. And I guess it brings a lot more meaning when the guests basically are like the con builders. Yeah. So maybe people may hang out with them and have more access to them and have more meaningful conversations. Yeah, we have a, yeah. another thing we do is called Guest Quest and it's kind of a smaller session. So um, basically it's like a group of 10 people and they get uh, kind of a sit down, find a little quiet area somewhere in the building and it's basically you sit down with the guest and just, just talk to them, just have a conversation about what they do and, and telling stories and getting to know them a little bit better. It's, it's more intimate than like a panel would be if you're in a room with a bunch of people. It's also a bit longer than just a two minute interaction where you shake their hand and get their autograph. Uh, it's, it's kind of something right in the middle of those two things. Well, oh, that's amazing. Yeah. What do you think are the other barriers that people have when people are using fandoms towards uh, looking to improve themselves mentally um, and in terms of wellness? Well, I mean, like I said, introversion and shyness is a big part of it. A lot of people who like these things do feel that way. And so we want them to try and come out of their shell and feel like they can be themselves at this convention. Um, it, we want to be all inclusive and include everybody, include everybody regardless of who they are and what they do. Um, we don't want any negative uh, negativity or, or uh, hate or anything like that happening here. It's all going to be all positive positive vibes to encourage people to come out. We want it to be a safe space. It's a safe yes. space, right? So that's one thing. So it's my hope that uh, if somebody comes here and they see the panels and they meet the people who are doing these things for a living, that they can find in themselves the self-confidence to try themselves. That's a big part of, of uh, celebrating your fandom, just finding the confidence to do it. And that's, I know that's a huge um, a barrier for a lot of people. Huge, huge barrier. Yeah. Especially when toxicity does happen within fandom I know. Yes, yes. It, it's, uh, to me, I, I just don't know what to make of it. I'm like, how are these people even fans of the, I don't think they are fans of the thing they think they are, maybe? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> it's such a tough, tough situation. But yeah. here at FanQuest, where it's a real life event, we're here in person celebrating the fandoms together as a community. That's the, that's the goal. So inclusiveness is a huge message that FanQuest Absolutely. wants to bring. And this really does resonate with many people who want to join in fandoms and celebrate them mm -hmm. for their own well-being. That's, I think that's really great. 
you. All right. So, what's the main takeaway you want people when they are watching it? What is the main takeaway that you want people to uh, look at? FanQuest? Or this whole interview in general? Um, and in FanQuest in general? Come to FanQuest. <laughs> to. No, seriously, seriously. This is the thing. And this is uh, such a good. This interview has made me realize this that FanQuest can help you reach reach your dreams. That's a lofty promise. I understand that. But coming here, you will meet people who will inspire you to do the thing you've always wanted to do. That's that's my that's my dream, is that, that people will come to FanQuest and achieve that. Great, great. Alright, so that's the end of our interview. Be sure to check out my panel on June 23rd at FanQuest, where I'll be talking about toxicity, conflict, and drama within fandom communities. It'll be at 1 p.m. and it will be at one of the classrooms here in FanQuest. And uh, stay tuned for my next guest in Siki Sensei's Encounters, and I hope to see you then. Goodbye.